discipline, tolerance, and production to build a strong and better nation. I say that is the main foundation. So come let us go hand in hand, because this is our land. Come, my brother, come, my sister, and let us build a nation together. So much of things that we need to see about Surely I do have to spell them out. Cause you know as well as I do, the only way is putting more effort and less play. Because now, more than ever, we must show discipline, tolerance, and production to build a strong and better nation. I say, that is the main foundation. So come let us go hand in hand, because this is our land. Come my brother, come my sister, and let us build a nation together. Come my brother, come my sister. And let us build Grenada, Karaku, and P.T. Martinique together. This is the call. This is the plea. This is the request. Let us come and build this place we call home. I want to welcome you to the hub. And again, another opportunity for you and I to talk using social media and radio to connect. We have great many things to talk about tonight. Because I want to start off by commending the Honorable Joseph Andal for being on the ball. And he has always been that type of person. But you know, five families are still without a home in Shantimel after that fire destroyed the homes. And Joseph Andal was on the ball from day one. In fact, he was in the parliament and he had to be excused to go to console, to be there with the family, to stand with them during that very tough, tough time. So they have started the process of getting them uh, a unit at the Chinese uh, houses. Well, the Chinese are low income houses and that project in St. Patrick. Right, so uh, the many apartments there, uh, they will seek to have as many of them as possible go into those units. So the first family got the keys to one of them today. So, welcome. Thank you. And I mean, it's a pity that you lost your home. But we are happy that at least you can get some temporary accommodation. We're going to work with you to make sure that it's properly furnished and that you and your wife will be as comfortable as possible. I appreciate that very much. Okay. Thank you. Right, so that's uh, the Honorable Joseph Andal there. So that's just one family, but I know uh, even today, they are working on a number, either one or two more. So they're trying their best to get housing accommodation for them. And the best place for now, temporarily, is the Chinese uh, houses or apartments in St. Patrick. Uh, they will seek to rebuild those houses, uh, which is really good. So we wish them all the best. And I'm happy that the Honorable Joseph Andel continues to represent the people of St. Patrick West well. 
Uh, some people don't understand the work that he has been doing in foreign affairs to put Grenada on the map and make sure that much needed resources come to this country and this place we call home with the kind of relationships he has been, you know, building and, uh, you know, as we say, ties, right, country to country and so on. So he has been doing a wonderful job out there and we have to commend him. Uh, you know, foreign ministers tend to get a lot of licks politically in their constituency because they're always out doing the work of the country. And some people cannot calculate the gains. They cannot calculate the, 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 uh, the, the successes of the many trips and uh, meetings and engagements with other countries that the foreign ministry would have. And um, that's how it goes, though. But I want to applaud him. He has always been very prompt and underground with his constituents. So kudos to you, the Honorable Joseph. And all right, then we saw the Winwood Fishing Center progressing nicely. Boy, the Honorable uh, Tevin Andrew is doing a fantastic job up there in Karaku. And you know, Winwood, PT Martinic, and Winwood, they're big when it comes to fishing. And uh, they were without, well, Karaku on a whole was without a proper uh, fish market. and the Honorable Tevin Andrews, uh, he's working very hard to get that going in Winward Scent. Well, we know Caracu, right? We know Caracu. So, Pity Matnik Winward, that area, they will benefit significantly from that. Yes, yeah, so a lot of work is being done there, and that would be a great, great, great project for the people of Karaku and PT Martinique. And I look forward to the launch, the official opening, not the launch, sorry, but the official opening of that facility. So work is well on its way, you know, making sure that the uh, fisher folks can dock the boat up, bring the fish in. Uh, that's a really, really good project. If you ask me, I want to commend them. For that, the Honorable Tevin Andrews. I mean, he has always been at it. Uh, it's nothing new. He is very dedicated to his constituents. I want to also uh, say that the NDC, they're having an activity to raise some much-needed funds for the people who were affected, who were affected by uh, the fire in Chantimel. All right, so the NDC as a party, they're doing all that they can to raise some much needed funds. All right, much needed funds towards that. So let me towards that undertaking. All right, so on March the 30th, all right, so today's the 27th. So three days from today, today being Wednesday, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So Saturday, March the 30th. They will be having a fundraiser or they will be doing a fundraiser. Fundraiser help us rebuild together. All right. For the people, the victims, the fire victims who are affected in Shanti Mel. Uh, they will be having breakfast for $10 times 6.30, lunch $15 times 12 noon, and Tanya Log times 6.30 a.m. Venue. Coco Valley Bar Shanty Mel, uh, that Shanty Mel St. Patrick. And in fact, I will try my best to make it up there for either one of them. All right? Because it is a very important, very important undertaking. So I want to applaud uh, the folks. Uh, I said the NDC. I should not have said the NDC. All right? Uh, my good friend Terry Forrester, he sent that to me. But I'm not seeing, I am not seeing who organize it. I want to assume it is the people of Shantimel, the people of Shantimel. So I do apologize there for saying the NDC. 
all right? Because I saw the honorable, well, the most honorable Deacon Mitchell, he had that there to promote him. And also Terry Forrester sent it to me. Uh, so again, uh, let me just correct that. The Honorable Dennis Conwell, the Honorable Joseph Andel, and the people of St. Patrick, they have organized that event. And they're asking everyone to come out and be a part of that on Saturday coming, starting, well, early morning, 6.30 breakfast and lunch, 12 noon, Tanya Log 6.30. Well, the Tanya Log is actually for breakfast too, you know, 6.30 a.m. So the breakfast is, you know, there will be Tanya Log also with the breakfast. So you have breakfast you could buy without the Tanya Log. Tanya Log will be going for $5. All right, so again, it's at Coco Valley Bar Shantimel. And I want to assume that if you have any, you know, money that you want to give towards the family or anything that you think they may need, right? That are kind of important now, things like mattresses, uh, things like, you know, bedding, sheets, and so on. Uh, of course, clothes, clean, new clothes, because they're young ones involved. Um, food stuff that's not expired. I know that would be very important now. Some of them, they need medication and so on. So if you communicate with them directly, you would know who need medication and so on. You can assist uh, because we need to help the families. Five families, boy, that's not that's not easy. That's not easy. There's about 17 of them <laughs> affected by this. And I kind of, you know, jay somewhat there, but it's it's tough. It is tough for that for the, for the entire community of Shantimel. So I want to encourage you to support them. This event is very, very important. All right. I see Tessa Sincere. All right. So Tessa Sincere, Dr. Tessa Sincere and friends present Saturday, 30th March, time 3 p.m. Easter Funday. All right. Music by a popular DJ, Venue La Poetry Playing Field. Eats and drinks on sale. Face painting, movie night, Easter egg hunt. All right. Um, let me see here. Bongs in Castle, 360 uh, photo booth. So quite a bit happening there. And that's on the same day, Saturday. I know I lost audio there. All right, so a number of people there are calling me now. All right, so I lost audio there with the streaming. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. Thanks. All right, blessings. Yeah, so I lost audio there. So a good friend is telling me I lost audio.
cheer Though troubles linger still Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me I know who stands behind The God of angel armies Is always by my side The one who reigns forever He is a friend of mine The God of angel armies is always by my side. Right. Uh, so <laughs> I didn't realize that we we're back on. I thought the actual streaming, I thought I cut off that. So that would be a problem in terms of uploading, but uh, the information I have to disseminate. All right. So Kim the King, he will put me back on your video. Oh, no, but your audio. All right. Good. Nice. So uh, good. So just saying, uh, let me get that because I think it's important. All right. So I do apologize there. You know, with technology, those things do happen. Uh, I do apologize for that. You know, sometimes things are somewhat uncontrollable with technology. So I was saying to you that, uh, let me just repeat, all right, for those who didn't hear it, the uh, MPs, uh, that's Joseph Andel, and Dennis Conwell. So the Honorable Joseph Andel, the Honorable Dennis Conwell, and the people of Shantimel, they have organized this event, a fundraiser on Saturday coming. Together, we rebuild this, you know, five houses and the community, because they, they're shaken by this loss. Five houses is not easy. Thank God no one lost uh, their lives. But just saying, that fundraiser will be at the Coco Valley Bar Shanti Mel on, on uh, Saturday. Saturday coming. All right. And uh, so breakfast at 6.30 a.m. Tanya Log, $5. Breakfast, $10. Lunch, $15. And that is at 12 noon. So please mobilize, organize, and support that. That's a good cause. A really, really good cause. If you ask me, please support that. And I was saying to you that Tessa Sincere, she has two events. One on Saturday at 3 p.m., the Lapo Tree Playing Field, and one on Sunday at uh, the Pearls Playing Field. And you're going to get, you know, Bongson Castle, Easter Egg Hunt, Easter Egg Hunt, uh, Face Painting, uh, plus. You know, much more movie night, photo booth, just name it. So be real vibes there. And they're asking folks to come out in the numbers at all events. All right. At all the events. So remember it's Saturday. So Shantimel from 6 30 until meaning all 12. They have lunch. So morning breakfast, lunch at 12. Then you have Tessa Sincere, not far from there. Uh, Lapo Tree that's uh, at 3 3 p.m. and then the Sunday uh, it would be at Pearls so please go there and support 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 Dr. Sin says she's doing a really good job all right nice all right let me see here all right, let me just someone from St. David you know they sent me a little ad, a little promo, but it was in an audio format. All right, it was an audio format. They have an event too. So I wanted to play that at, at Latant. I think it's the NDC office or the constituency office, something like that. I, I think it's the NDC office there. They have that event at Latant. All right, but the person sent me in an audio format. So I have to kind of play it and then bring it to you, all right? So. Good morning, Kim. Right. Um, we would like you to um give us a little um promo, please. Right. The um polling division eleven. Right. So polling division eleven. We'll be having a breakfast. They will be having a breakfast. Second Saturday. The April. second Saturday in April. Downstairs the NDC office. Downstairs the NDC office. Latent. Latent. All right. Right. 
Pulling Division 11. Right, so we have two weeks to go for that. So no problem. All right, no problem. I'll talk about that uh, sometime uh, down the road. All right? And folks, I told you uh, yesterday, well, this morning, yesterday and this morning, that uh, I am planning this event. It's the 10th anniversary of me being on radio, you know, talk show and podcasting. That would be on the 31st of May. So that event will be at the Trade Center on the 31st of May, starting at 4 p.m. and going until 10. Tickets, $50. Local foods will be on sale, drinks on sale. And if you can't make it, if you can't come in person, you can uh, sponsor a couple tickets, right? A couple tickets that seats in there. You can sponsor that, and I will write your name or so uh, there. In fact, today, a good friend sponsored 10, 10 tickets, right? So one person sponsored 10 today. That's a blessing to start off with, and another person sponsored two. And then there are other people who called me and indicated to me that they want a couple tickets, all right? So we expect great many people to buy tickets because it's my 10th year doing this on radio, and 10 years is, is a lot. It's a decade. It's a lot. So I'm celebrating that with style at the Trade Center. Again, saying to you that I have tickets. Have tickets. And uh, it's 50 EC. Someone asked today if it's 50 US. No. It's 50 EC. EC. Our money. 50 EC. And uh, you can holler at me, send me a message. So if you can't come in person, all you need to do is to just sponsor some tickets as a form of giving back, as a form of appreciation, just sponsor a couple of tickets, right? If you have people that you can send, you can give the tickets and have them come, that's great. If not, then just sponsor them, all right? Just sponsor them. So I want to encourage you, uh, my good friend there, Candice, uh, no, Candy Kiss Lawrence, I will sponsor two tickets here. So thank you very much there, my dear. Thank you very much, really appreciate that. So I want to encourage you, if you're outside, you know, you can't make it to come. And even if you're here in Grenada and you can't make it to come to the event, please sponsor a couple of tickets, all right? Sponsor a couple of tickets. I want to encourage you to buy a couple of tickets. It's $50 if you could come. It's a casual event. It's casual. So Abigail Paul is saying, hey, that's just 20 US. So it's 20 US. So a friend ask sometime during today whether it's 50 US or 50 EC. It's 50 EC, so it's 20 US. 20 US, all right? So the event, it's at the Trade Center, and it's 10 years. 10 years is big, it's huge, right? Uh, and if everyone who follows the program and listens to the program uh, can give, or at least buy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 tickets, 20 tickets, 15 tickets, then we would have a great number of people uh, supporting this, because this is big for me. 10 years is a huge milestone and we want to do it in fine style, all right? It will be a kind of ceremony thing, but it's casual. It's not no formal thing. Casual, you dress how you want to dress, really. It's a casual event. Come, you eat, you drink, socialize. Uh, there will be a light ceremony there uh, to mark this occasion. It's, this is big. 10 years for me being on radio. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's huge. This is a huge milestone. So I want to encourage you to, to buy a ticket or two or three or four or five or six or seven, eight, nine. It's $50. So like a friend today, uh, the same friend, she said she wanted five tickets. When she went to uh, MoneyGram, she decided she would send money for 10, $500 for 10, right? So again, I want to encourage you. If you send 100 US, that would get, get uh, would purchase uh, five tickets, right? Five tickets, it's a lot. So I want to encourage you to sponsor a couple tickets. If you can't make it, uh, sponsor a couple tickets. Because, you know, we have overheads and so on to cover. But it's so important that you be a part. So if you buy the tickets, you can't make it, I would write your name and have your name there as a sponsor. All right? Even if you don't want your full name, I could abbreviate it. I could shorten it. All right? So just buy a couple tickets, sponsor a couple tickets if you can't make it. And I'm appealing... Uh, specifically to those in the diaspora, because I know you were recently here for independence. 
so great and a number a great number of people would not be able to come for the event right uh and then there are people who come in for carnival and who would come to the carnival event that i'm planning right the annual thing so again i want to encourage you to um support support this event all right support this event if you have been following me from day one it's a good opportunity to give back because i have been volunteering my time and effort to do this program morning and night not being paid not being paid a cent towards this particular undertaking so again i want to encourage you to 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 to, to sponsor a couple couple tickets all right uh towards this 50 ec sponsor a couple tickets towards the event uh it, it's a huge milestone for me so if you out there you're in grenada if you could make it buy a couple tickets and make it i have tickets as i told you the tickets are available as we speak 50 ec if you can't come sponsor a couple tickets 100 ec will get you two tickets all right 200 will get you four tickets 500 ec will get you 10 tickets so you could team up with your friends and so on and say hey let's be a part of this let's go let's support chem and then not only that the different constituency branches you can organize with 50 ec get a couple of your supporters and friends in those different constituencies to come and be a part of this all right very very important indeed but again i want to feature our beloved prime minister he spoke to the roads issue you know in terms of the roads and the kind of work that is to come i want to feature that and i want to also feature the upgrades boy people are talking about the license the upgrades with the license you don't have to go back and do exams and so on to get it once you're five years on the road you can get that and people are talking about it uh, Mr. Speaker, the aim of the bill uh, is, is pretty straightforward and, and simple, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I think it's in keeping with the comment by the Honorable Member for St. Andrews Southeast of the need to, in fact, encourage and support um, our contractors uh, or citizens to engage in commerce, to engage in business, and to help to empower them. Um, so it's in, in two parts, Mr. Speaker. Um, one, it addresses the opportunity for persons who hold, in effect, a B class, a C class, or C1 class license to be able to upgrade their license without sitting an exam by moving from B to D class, or from C to D class, or from C1 to D class, if they have driven for more than five years in that particular class, uh, and if they deem medically fit to uh, continue driving. So in, 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 in very layman terms, um, this is what it's seeking to do. Now the, the, the B, the C, the C1 and the D-class licenses, Mr. Speaker, obviously uh, uh, associated with the type of vehicle that one is uh, permitted to, to drive. So in particular, if you have a B-class, I guess in ordinary terms, you'd be driving a, a regular private vehicle. Uh, the, 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 if you have a C and a C1 class, you'd be driving a different type of vehicle. And if you have a D, uh, uh, you'd be driving a different type of, of, of vehicle. The main aim, Mr. Speaker, is to get persons in the B or C or C1 to be able to move to a D-class license. It is not meant to allow a person who has a B license to automatically get a C license, or if you have a C license, to automatically get a C1 license. You would still have to go through the normal process there. It is merely meant to allow someone who has a B license to get a D license, someone who has a C license to get a D license, for someone who has a C1 license to get a, a, a D license. So that's the first uh, point I want to uh, emphasize, Mr. Speaker. And again, second, as I said, you have to be driving uh, for five years uh, in a particular class. Uh, and then you have to have, uh, uh, and I think the, the Royal Green Police Force was keen on that, confirmation that you're medically fit, um, obviously, to continue, to continue driving. Um, and the question is, why, why are we seeking to have this? Mr. Speaker, we've had, um, Significant requests uh, from persons, particularly small business owners and so on, 
who are faced with a situation where a, someone who has a D-class license essentially can't drive a pickup truck. And Mr. Speaker, if we, we, and, and to a large extent, that's what the D-class license is. I'm saying my description of vehicle a pickup truck, but I, the proper description based on the Road Traffic Act will say a vehicle that is 7,000 uh, kgs and under. But when you say 7,000 kgs and under to the average person, it's not actually giving them a sense of what the vehicle is. So it's really the pickup trucks. Um, and so, Mr. Speaker, what we, we find is a situation where, you know, small business owners who are electricians or plumbers or farmers find themselves where the, the employees have a private D-class license. They can drive a car, they can drive an SUV, but they can't drive a pickup to drop them in or to drop the equipment. And in many instances, the owner himself oftentimes has to be the driver, which takes away from his ability to actually do his own uh, management of, of the, 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 the work. And so oftentimes what you find is that the, the owner or the manager's time or the person with the D-class license has to find himself driving the pickup to drop persons who actually can drive and who have been driving for more than five or ten years, but they don't have the D-class the class license. Um, and so really, Mr. Speaker, it is aimed at uh, uh, significantly addressing that challenge uh, that many of our small businesses face uh, from the fact that uh, uh, many of the employees uh, would have to, to leave and go get a test um, to essentially drive the same vehicle. Because a, a pickup is essentially an SUV with the back uncovered. Right? Uh, so there's no real significant uh, challenge in terms of the, 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 the size of the vehicle. Um, and, and so you have the anomaly where um, I think C and C1 class licenses, um, perhaps one could even argue that you're even more skilled if you already have a C or C1 class license, um, and yet still you can't get a D, a D class license. So the aim, Mr. Speaker, is really to ensure that these categories of persons have the option uh, to, to have their uh, licenses uh, endorsed with a D1 class, with a D class license. Um, that allows them to uh, be able to drive the, the D-class. Um, the other issue, uh, Mr. Speaker, is that in order to drive a D-class, the law currently says you must be 25 years old. Which, again, you know, one of the, the challenges about youth unemployment is that oftentimes we create the barriers by our policies and our laws that actually creates youth unemployment. You know, so why, why shouldn't a 24-year-old be able to drive a pickup? If he's a young farmer, if he's a, a plumber, an electrician. If we sent him to New Law and he's learned his craft, he's gotten a job, he's built himself up. I mean, you can't be an electrician without really having um, a, a pickup or some sort of uh, minibus or, or how you going to carry the trunking, the this, the that, etc. So the challenge, Mr. Speaker, is to ensure that we give young persons the opportunity to be able to get a D-class license. Um, specifically. I, I want to emphasize again it's D-class license so we are not uh, applying this to uh, for example passenger bus to public service vehicles because obviously you are dealing with increased risk in driving a, a public bus because you are dealing with passengers you are dealing with 16, 17, 18 persons and we need to make sure um, that persons who are issued uh, bus licenses in particular are well trained well, well equipped, well skilled to be able to make sure that that happens. So Mr. Speaker that's really the, the, the in layman's terms the objectives of the, the uh, amendment to allow uh, for an SRO to be passed to effectively give effect um, to, to those things. Um, there are things we will have to work on as part of um, uh, ensuring that that can happen. Uh, we obviously will have to uh, speak with the insurance industry um, because obviously that's uh, one major stakeholder because you appreciate that oftentimes uh, insurance policies have restrictions on who can and who can't drive vehicles, the age at which they can and cannot drive and so on. Uh, and so part of, of, of there's always a chicken and egg situation, what moves first? Should the law move first or should we encourage the insurance uh, to move? But I, I have no, no insurance and their, uh, their aversion to risk. If the law doesn't move, Mr. Speaker, they are not going to, they are not going to move. Right? So again, this is aimed at ensuring uh, that, that our young people, uh, that the youth economy has an opportunity uh, to be able to, to, to drive uh, D-class vehicles uh, before they're they 25. Uh, and, and Mr. Speaker, again, it's also to show confidence in our, in our young people that uh, they can be responsible if given the opportunity. Uh, to be to be responsible. So those are already, Mr. Speaker, the underlying uh, rationale for uh, seeking the amendment and bringing the legislation to to, to Parliament. Um, and as as part of this as well, Mr. Speaker, um, one of the, the the curiosities we observed when going through the legislation was the fact that there is actually no age restriction. We thought there was, but on uh, further scrutiny, we realised there isn't. That there is no age restriction on driving 
heavy vehicles. In other words, uh, heavy specialized vehicles like a tractor or an excavator. <laughs> but there's an age restriction on driving um, a, a pickup. So it may have been an oversight. Um, and so one of the things, and, 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 and so the intention initially, Mr. Speaker, was that we would have had to have an amendment to um, address um, the, the, the excavators and so on, but that's not necessary, it's only the D-class. Um, and so, Mr. Speaker, one of the things uh, we certainly will seek to do as well is to encourage and ensure that we can have some training programs uh, with the heavy equipment operators and owners that will give young people the opportunity to be trained specifically in the operation of those things, from forklifts to excavators to tractors, etc. Because those, those skill sets are needed. And I also want to specifically say, uh, Mr. Speaker, targeting women as well. Right, because um, you know, traditionally you would not have seen women driving public service vehicles, buses, etc. And there's a lot more of that. Uh, there really is no reason why. Uh, and I don't know that men are better, almost skilled drivers than, than women. Men may make the comments when they see a woman on the road, but I'm sure the insurance companies will tell you that there are far less accidents um, where the, the drivers are women compared to, to men. And I see a few women nodding. So, the truth, Mr. Speaker, is even for the heavy equipment operations and so on, in terms of the training, we'll also be um, specifically targeting uh, women as well, uh, because the statistics are also still showing that, uh, uh, on a gender basis, that unemployment is still higher um, amongst women than it is amongst, amongst men. Yeah, so folks, that's a good thing in terms of the upgrade. And uh, if you want to know if something is popular or likable, just be around young people. They are talking about this. Today I had about 13 of them here at my place and all of them, they are happy about that, the upgrade. So it's very popular and people are talking about it. So I want to commend the most honorable Deacon Mitchell and his team for the foresight for the vision in ensuring that this comes on stream. Let's look at the road and the kind of work to come there. Disasters. Now, Mr. Speaker, as I said, uh, this administration inherited a Ministry of Infrastructure with very little capacity to do anything on its own. So I'll give an example. Mr. Speaker, right now, the way in which the road crews repair the roads, uh, to a large extent, they have no control over it. What happens now, Mr. Speaker, is that they wait for when hot mix is available uh, from the CCC quarry. It is unpredictable. It is not planned. And the road crews are literally at the mercy of that quarry. So what happens, Mr. Speaker, is that the crews literally wait. And then they get a call and they're told a truck of asphalt is available. A truck. Uh, and, and invariably, you have 12 or so crews scattered around the island. And they have to make do with that one truck. So when, so when you see them on a Saturday or on a Sunday, uh, repairing the road, Mr. Speaker, and oftentimes people may complain about the limited amount of work they do, that's because that's the amount of asphalt they have. That's one. Two, they do not have the right equipment, Mr. Speaker. So invariably, what you see is the truck with the asphalt, a roller, the drums with the bitumen, and the traditional brooms or other things that they use to put the tar and some sand. They don't have cutters to cut the road, Mr. Speaker, to remove the asphalt that is already uh, weakened, to escape it, to roll and relay the foundation, and then to redo the asphalt. So what has happened, Mr. Speaker, over several years, and unfortunately still happening, is that invariably we take asphalt and we just dump it on top of the asphalt, and then we roll it. And so the roads oftentimes get higher and higher and higher. And that is because we have not provided them with the proper equipment, Mr. Speaker, that is required to address the situation. And all of the tools are rented. All of the tools are, are rented. From the small handheld tools to the heavy tools, to the excavators, to the tractors, etc., to the rollers. So rollers are rented, Mr. Speaker, per day. And they're used for half an hour. The 
because the amount of asphalt you have is quite limited. And you only need to replace when the asphalt is done. But you have to pay dairy. But you're not using the rule of five. We can drive all around Greenland and see them packed up, waiting for work, because there is no work. So, Mr. Speaker, we have to now build, procure equipment, and build a system that allows us to properly maintain the roads. And oftentimes, roads deteriorate. And we can take a, a good example. Let's see the Calipini Main Road. If you drive on it now, you see the signs that tells you the road needs to be maintained. You see the sign that tells you, you know, there's some recurring potholes that says this needs to be cut, the foundation needs to be addressed, and then the asphalt needs to be relayed. But when you don't have the machine to cut the asphalt, Mr. Speaker, what happens is that the crew simply fills the hole up and rolls it. But the underlying condition has not been addressed, so when the rain comes, it will happen again. So, Mr. Speaker, we are, we are in the process of devising a system that will allow us, first of all, to increase or capacity to obtain asphalt so that the crews that maintain our road, in fact, have the materials they need to deploy to engage in more extensive repairs and maintenance of our roads. We have procured uh, bitumen from Trinidad and Tobago in partnership uh, with the Chinese who are at the airport currently, Mr. Speaker, who have a large asphalt plant. We supplied the bitumen. We have procured uh, many of the aggregates. We have procured the warmer. Uh, we are going through the testing phase. And so we expect uh, once the appropriate uh, tests are conducted in terms of uh, the asphalt mix and quality, that our crews will therefore have access to a lot more asphalt in more predictable quantities so that we can engage in more extensive road repair throughout the trial and safety of this market uh, Mr. Speaker, currently only one entity can supply asphalt on the island. And I've just said uh, that entity is not able to meet the demands for all kinds of varying reasons um, of the state. And so we are in discussions, Mr. Speaker, to see whether we can encourage other members of the private sector to engage in particular uh, the business of having an asphalt plant uh, that can ensure that we have alternative supplies for the supply of asphalt in Grenada so that we can engage in the, in the road maintenance. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as you would also be aware, you know, many times the public expects the government to be able to respond and respond within a certain time, particularly when you have natural disasters, particularly when you have community initiatives where small roads and so on are required to be opened and so on. And when you don't have any equipment at all, Mr. Speaker, it basically means you're again at the mercy of third parties we have to wait on. Particularly when it comes to community initiatives and community development, Mr. Speaker, we can't allow this to continue. And so uh, we are certainly going to be looking at uh, procuring uh, in small quantities as appropriate equipment that would allow uh, the ministries, particularly social and community development and so on, to be able to respond to the needs of the communities when it comes to opening small roads, clearing areas that are blocked, dealing with fallen trees, etc., uh, so that uh, assisting our farmers on some of the farm roads and so on, uh, so that they have the necessary equipment uh, that is required to allow us to respond uh, quicker on those issues. Mr. Speaker, as you are aware, uh, I will just simply uh, wrap up uh, on, on two matters, uh, three matters, Mr. Speaker. One, work on the Marlin Road is continuing. Uh, we expect the work to complete uh, by the last quarter of 2024. However, uh, all things being equal, the contractor has given a commitment uh, that they will certainly seek to try and accelerate as much as they can the work to see whether or not it is possible to have the road available and open in August or September of, of this year. But contractually, the, the obligation is uh, for December. Uh, thus far, we've been blessed with relatively good weather for the first quarter of 2024. And if that holds, uh, we expect uh, that the work will, will, will uh, conclude um, in the last quarter of 2024, 20, and the main artery to the Western Road will uh, then become open. Um, of course, the situation continues to pose a challenge for commuters on the West Coast who are required to either go through the bypass road of Mount Puma or the Mount Moritz Road, both of which are considerably longer, and in the case of the Mount Moritz Road, um, considerably 
more difficult, given the fact that the route of the road was not meant to accommodate really two-way traffic uh, on, on any significant numbers. That has affected commuters in particular, members of the public, who are required to get bus transportation uh, to get to Sotels, uh, St. John and St. Mark in particular. So, Mr. Speaker, we are quite eager and keen to make sure that the work on this road is, is, is completed. The second uh, uh, major artery that work will commence on shortly, Mr. Speaker, is the cliff to Owen Road. Uh, in fact, the original intent was to uh, stop vehicle access to that area uh, starting this Monday. But in light of the long Easter weekend that is uh, upon us, Mr. Speaker, as well as the first games, we've taken the decision to allow access to the road to remain until after the Easter weekend. And we expect that uh, preliminary works for the commencement of major renovation of uh, that piece of road uh, to therefore uh, commence in earnest uh, immediately after the end of the Easter uh, period. Um, Mr. Speaker, I will provide more details um, uh, uh, at the next sitting of the House of Parliament on, on, on this issue. Um, but we suffice it to say, Mr. Speaker, that the original designs which we inherited from the past administration was not adequate. It was simply seeking to uh, reconstruct the retaining walls and repave the road. Now, Mr. Speaker, if you know that road, in its current state, there are areas where two vehicles cannot pass without one stopping. So there are some parts of the road that are quite narrow, less than six meters. And so, Mr. Speaker, we had to go back to the designers best on the consultants, and indicate to them in 2023, 2024, you can't be designing a road where two vehicles can't pass. You can't be designing a road uh, that is in a heavy pedestrian area with houses both at the bottom and the top, and there's no sidewalk. So, Mr. Speaker, we asked the consultants to go back to the drawing board to widen the road, particularly in areas where it is quite narrow, because we are coming from three main arteries. We are coming from Springs Main Road, we are coming from the Woodlands Main Road, actually four, we are coming from the Woburn Main Road, we are coming from the Calvini Main Road, we are coming from the Mongeau Main Road, that's actually five. And you're all getting into this narrow bottleneck with hairpin corners, narrow with cliffs on the side, retaining walls at the bottom. So what the construction will do, Mr. Speaker, is to widen the roads by cutting into the cliffs, uh, straightening the road so that the, the, the line of sight is improved, uh, the construction of sidewalks so that our citizens can walk on the pavement without the risk of being run over by these large trucks and, and, and trailer, trailers that are heading up the East Coast. Uh, all the way to St. Patrick and St. David's so Hotel and so on development, and to assure that there's a improved safety for pedestrians along that area. Uh, we are expecting, Mr. Speaker, that the work once commenced should conclude in about uh, eight to ten months, um, because it, it, while there are some significant corners, the road itself is not very long, and we are also fortunate that there are significant alternative routes. Uh, so, for example, the Woburn Main Road. So we will ask the public, Mr. Speaker, to bear with us and to respect the, the new entry signs once they go up, to allow the contractors the ability to work uh, as efficiently and effectively as possible. I mean, obviously, the residents will have access, uh, but for the remainder of the public, the open public road does allow you uh, a sufficient detour. Um, you also have the Manjil uh, Marion road that comes back to White Gun as a sufficient detour. And so we ask persons, uh, please, to, to assist us by ensuring that they allow the contractors to work uh, peacefully. Mr. Speaker, um, once we are able to procure the asphalt uh, in the quantities uh, that we think we will be able to uh, by working uh, collectively with uh, the Chinese and others who are able to give us alternative supplies of asphalt, there are other roads we would be looking to, to tackle. Um, the Member of Parliament for the south of the island will be pleased to hear that we intend to tackle the True Blue Main Road. That's a road, Mr. Speaker, since the time of Sir Eric Matthew Gary has been built and to a large extent ignored since then. Um, not only does the road lead to St. George's University, and I don't need to speak about the uh, significance, uh, economic and symbolic of St. George's University and the hundreds of Grenadians who uh, work at that institution, um, but Mr. Speaker, we will uh, tackle the road. 
Uh, there are many other uh, parts of Grenada which has been neglected uh, and not maintained, and we will tackle them as well. There's an area. There's an area called Mabuya in St. John. Mr. Speaker, for all of my adult life, this road has been abandoned. Persons going to Gov were made to go through Mount Granby, Mount Nesbitt, exit onto the Douglas Main Road, and then get to Gov. In recent times, the road, the road was open, <laughs> having not been attended to and not been fixed for decades. Mr. Speaker, we will tackle that stretch of the Mabuya Road and have it repaired. So citizens of St. John, St. Mark, and St. Right, folks. Uh, again, uh, that was the most honorable Deacon Mitchell there uh, speaking to the uh, upgrades on our roads and what is to come for the motorist here in Grenada. Caracu and P.T. Martinique, so a lot of money will go into upgrading our roads, repairing our roads, and doing it properly. That is what's important. So folks, I want to thank you very much for being a part of the program tonight. I want to wish you all the best. Have a wonderful night, and I will be back with you tomorrow, God's willing, starting from 8 in the a.m.